What's up, everybody? This is the Read and Feed channel with Joe Montoya. My name is Sean Bolden. I am a pastor in Central Texas at Living Waters Church. I'm the guest reader today, and this is where we read God's Word and feed our souls. We're going to dig into chapter 29 of Proverbs. And before we do that, I'm going to pray for us. Lord, thank you so much for this day and everything that you give us. Lord, we ask you to provide for us and protect us, and heal bodies, and even the listening audience right now, wherever they are, put your hand of blessing upon them, pour out your favor, your spirit, give us wisdom and insight into your word in Jesus' name, amen. Proverbs 29, it consists of 27 verses and uh, starts with, he who is often rebuked and hardens his neck will suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. When the righteous earn authority, the people rejoice, but when a wicked man rules, the people groan. Whoever loves wisdom makes his father rejoice, but a companion of harlots wastes his wealth. The king establishes the land by justice, but he who receives bribes overthrows it. A man who flatters his neighbor spreads a net for his feet. By transgression, an evil man is snared, but the righteous sings and rejoices. Verse 7. The righteous considers the cause of the poor, but the wicked does not understand such knowledge. 8. Scoffers set a city aflame, but wise men turn away wrath. If a wise man contends with a foolish man, there's a street sweeper, whether the fool rages or laughs, there is no peace. Verse 10. The bloodthirsty hate the blameless, but the upright seek his well-being. A fool vents all his feelings, but a wise man holds them back. If a ruler pays attention to lies, all of his servants will become wicked. The poor man and the oppressor have this in common. The Lord gives light to the eyes of both. The king who judges the poor with truth, his throne will be established forever. The rod and rebuke give wisdom, but a child left himself brings shame to his mother. Verse 16. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increases, but the righteous will see their fall. Correct your son and he will give you rest. Yes, he will give delight to your soul. Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint, but happy is he who keeps the law. If you want to circle or highlight that, we're going to talk about that at the end of 27. Verse 19, a servant will not be corrected by mere words, for though he understands, he will not respond. Do you see a man hasty in his words? There is more hope for a fool than for him. He who pampers his servant from childhood will have him as a son in the end. Verse 22. An angry man stirs up strife, and a furious man abounds in transgression. A man's pride will bring him low, but the humble in spirit will retain honor. Whoever is a partner with a thief hates his own life. He swears to tell the truth, but reveals nothing. Verse 25. The man of... The fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. Many seek the ruler's favor, but justice for man comes from the Lord. And lastly, verse 27, an unjust man is an abomination to the righteous. And he who is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. So we're going to jump into verse 18. This version says, where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. Another version says, where there's no wisdom, I'm sorry, where there's no vision, the people perish. Or where there is no direct revelation from God, the people perish. Another way of saying it is where there is no vision, where there's no vision from God, the people run wild. And so you may have been in a season like this where you don't have vision. I know I have, where you just feel stuck. You feel like you're in a spin cycle where you just, it's hard to get out of bed. It's hard to get motivated. It's hard to get going. But when you have a vision, when you have a vision from God or a, or a direct uh, instruction from God, it gives you peace. It gives you comfort. It gives you power. And so you may know somebody right now that doesn't have a vision for their life. Help them with that vision. Ask them to seek the Lord. Help them understand that God has got a clear path for them and, and they have to seek him to find it. Some of the best organizations in the entire world have a clear vision. They know what they're doing. They know how to do it. 
and they know how to communicate it and that's what people get behind and people are a part of that's why church is great because there's a clear vision that's why the best most successful companies are successful because they have a clear vision and people rally to it and you can have one for your own life we can have one for our own lives we can have a vision a one-year plan or a five-year plan or we can have a vision that's very clear and that that gives us direction it gives us clarity and my prayer for you right now is that you get a vision for your life that it comes from God, that he downloads that vision, he downloads that plan, he downloads that clarity so that you can operate with effectiveness, that you can get motivated, you can seek the plan of God that he has for you with all your heart. And then when you're on that path, you're on that plan, God just blesses you. He blesses you over and over and over in good times and bad times. If you've got that vision and you're holding on to that vision, there's nothing you can't accomplish. God bless you. I hope this encourages you wherever you are. Stay safe out there and we'll see you next time.